I'm going to try and start this. Okay, so um, Mel said I can talk about anything that I like, so I'm going to be talking about something that we're busy with in the South African tourism industry at the moment, which is trying to get our government to open our borders so that we can accept international tourists to arrive again and have our South African people go and travel the world again. The Tourism Business Council South Africa, that's the logo you see at the top, is the umbrella organization that looks after um, all of the different tourism associations inside the country from the airline associations through to the hotel associations. And we've been tasked to do this on their behalf. Essentially, our goal is, as I said, to reopen South Africa's international borders as quickly as possible, as safely as possible. As I'm sure you are all aware, the beautiful coronavirus has gone and drawn a line through most of our tourism uh, industries in the world for a very long period of time. Um, particularly in South Africa, tourism is a, um, gives a strong contribution to the economy. And therefore, it is important that we reopen it, but do it in a phased, responsible and safe manner in order to prioritize the well-being of staff and guests. The tourism industry in South Africa, as I said, is a very, very important industry. The contribution to total GDP is about 8.6%. We're the second largest export. Interestingly, you wouldn't think that inbound tourism is an export, but it is, of course, an export because we bring foreign exchange into the country with that. We're the second largest, as I said, so 8.7% of the country's exports are contributed through the tourism industry. Um, we support in total one and a half million jobs. Um, we're the biggest employer of women and 60% of our staff are below the age of 35. The majority of um, the employment um, directly from the inbound industry sits at about 659,000 employees. And we have a very high number of small and medium sized enterprises in the sector, almost 50,000 SMMEs. And our total spend um, in the country was about 274 million rand that is the South African currency, RAND, in 2018. As I mentioned, we contribute about one and a half million jobs, um, and we've already lost almost 1.1 of those in the, in the short term, or have had, the income has been reduced, and the GDP reduction has gone from 8.7 to 2.5 percent over this year. 66% um, of the tourism industry in total is reliant on the in, inbound industry to reopen. So we have domestic tourism happening at the moment, but international tourists contribute the majority of the value to the sector. 58% of the tourism businesses in various surveys have already reported that they have applied significant downscaling in their um, employment numbers and in their salary bill. And over 600,000 tourism employees have applied for unemployment benefits since the borders have been closed. The inbound industry, of course, is not just leisure tourism, but also business travel. Um, business travel is vital for South Africa's um, globally linked economic sectors. Um, we're the 58th open economy in the world, third in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, trade, trade and investment flows in and outbound, of course, and international mobility of expertise and business leaders is critical to our success economically in South Africa. Um, we have very strong trade relationships between China, Germany, the States, and the UK and Japan. And of course, we need to be able to open our borders in order to be able to allow that to, to flourish. And we, the, the opening of borders also facilitates foreign direct investment, which is also essential for our economic growth. In addition, the, the inbound international business event tourism uh, industry, of course, is also linked. It's also not a leisure um, sector. Um, and we have uh, quite a few very large um, conferences every year in the country. For example, the World Petroleum Conference happens in South Africa every year in February. Normally, um, we have a very large um, conference that happens in Durban, one of our coastal cities, where um, the, the world's anesthesiologists come to, to the country and have a meeting every year, and those, of course, have all fallen away this year. Essentially, the biggest problem that we face is that South, South Africa's traditional high season is our summer, which is from, from September to March. 
every year. In those six months, we generate about 60% of our business. In the nine months between now and the middle of, of May, we generate about 77% of our business. If we were to reopen in March 2021, we would lose an entire high season. The other challenge that you have is that in all our um, inbound industry sectors, we have long lead times, so very long booking periods. That means that the industry is already holding a forward book um, for this period, um, and that is our ask is that we save as much of that forward book as possible. The other challenge that we have is that we risk the loss of being a regional hub because a lot of other African de destinations are starting to open, open up. And if we don't open up our borders soon, we lose first mover advantage. Aviation is very important to South Africa's economy. As you can see there in the little graphic, um, over the last 10, 15 years, our national carrier has been very aggressive in building Johannesburg, the OR Tambo International Airport as the hub into Africa. Um, and at the moment, of course, that is closed and therefore we are starting to lose our advantage against Ethiopian Airlines, Kenyan Airways are starting to come through. And a lot of the, a, the um, Middle East Airlines are starting to think about using other airports inside, in other countries as their sort of starting point into Africa, which over time is going to cause massive risk for us in the country. What have we done so far? We have already developed very robust health and safety protocols. Um, essentially, we are, because we are a tourism industry that handles travelers, we already identify, know, and track our clients. We already, already capture their passport information, and we, in most cases, know where they're going to be traveling to um, whilst they're in the country. So it's very easy um, for us to just expand that in order to be able to tra track and trace all of our tourists. We've developed principles with regards to um, health and safety protocols with PPE, sanitization processes, um, um, social distancing processes and key experiences, informing our staff and training our staff um, on uh, how to identify symptoms and how to handle um, COVID positive patient, passengers. And in addition, of course, we are educating throughout the entire value chain. So we're looking at every single touch point of the tourists and making sure that in all of those touch points, we are um, identifying how to create a safe um, and transmission safe um, experience for the travelers and to also, of course, protect our staff. As I said, we have developed these comprehensive sector protocols. We've received the World um, Travel and Tourism Council stamp of approval, which we're able to use across the country. Um, we are self-regulating in terms of our protocols. We are developing an app at the moment, which will also A, help us to um, regulate the implementation of the protocols, but also further track and trace um, our travelers whilst they're in the country. We've created a PPE marketplace also through the Tourism Business Council where businesses that need um, uh, affordable access to PPE are able to purchase those. Um, we are obviously lucky that the airline sector is already a sector that is um, substantially um, regulated and is quite accustomed to um, being regulated. And ICAO, which is the um, safety um, the arm of the Civil Aviation Authority has already got um, robust global um, health and safety protocols in place. And then, of course, we are all always learning from best practice in reopened countries. We are watching with great um, interest how the rest of the world is starting to open up and how they how they're doing so and how they're keeping their tourist, tourism experiences safe and yet pleasurable at the same time. The other upside that we have, of course, is that in South Africa, we are, have beautiful weather, particularly in our high season. We have wonderful warm climate and lots of our experiences are within nature and in, in the outdoors. So a massive opportunity for us to be able to open up safely. So our strategy when we're asking the government, um, as I mentioned, we are an industry that buys forward and therefore we are asking for a um, bit of advanced notice so that we can do some planning and a gradual restart. Um, we've watched other countries in the world look at air bridges and travel bubbles with other countries at a, at a similar pandemic level to see how you trial phase um, opening up and then in a phased approach start opening up one to three countries initially and then opening up 
the rest gradually. And then hopefully at some point, phasing out the health and safety protocol measures. Very important for us that domestic has opened first. Um, this presentation was created when domestic was not yet open, domestic leisure. So thankfully it has now been opened since this week. Um, it's important for us as a sector because it gives us the opportunity to demonstrate um, to our global market and of course also to our government that we are ready for tourism and that it is safe to do to open up and that nothing that there nothing of consequence happens when you do so. And uh, it also allows us to save key elements of the value chain because domestic tourists can start staying in hotels, um, experiencing some of the restaurants, some of the museums, etc., and get get start getting some money back into the system, which has been really important for us. And we are seeing some really positive um, responses of our domestic travelers and um, to the, their ability to be able to start traveling. And then for international travel, we're asking for, as I said, a bit of lead time, ideally six to eight weeks lead time for us to be able to prepare um, opening up, making sure that you start getting some last minute bookings in, making sure that you can still save some of the bookings that you were having in the system already. And then looking at a trial phase, we were asking for the 1st of September, but it looks like that's probably only going to be the 1st of October at this stage. Um, asking to identify safe source markets. At the moment, we're, we're suggesting that to be Germany. One of the reasons why is because um, Germany is one of the top three international source markets for South Africa. Um, and it has a similar pandemic or has a very safe pandemic status at the moment. And also um, has quite a good amount of airlift, direct airlift into South Africa. So those three things make it our um, primary suggestion in terms of a safe source market with which we could do a travel bubble and then go into open spaces, do safaris, go to low risk areas in terms of our provinces where there isn't a lot of the virus running around. And then at the same time, we're asking, can we please also already open up independent business travel? Because um, you know, in the, the, the business traveler doesn't immerse themselves as much into a country as a leisure tourist does. Then the second phase, we would suggest that, that we add more countries that have got direct links um, and um, expand the destination experiences, look at potentially allowing cruise ships to return back to South Africa, which is also a massive industry for us in our high season, because all the cruise ships from Europe and all over the, um, the world come down to the Southern Hemisphere when it's warm down here. Um, and then also start looking at in the second phase, in this phase 2B, looking at hub flights, bigger other markets, for example, China and India, and then start enabling my, the MICE business, so the meetings and incentives um, and conferencing and events industries. And then finally, open air, the air, open the skies fully, open the destination fully, and restart for a longer term growth. So that is our ask. Our suggestions in terms of how do we do that, how do we do open the country um, safely. Um, we found that ICAO is recommending um, a 72 hours prior to departure negative COVID test as a requirement, um, which then gets submitted online to the Department of Home Affairs system. And then on departure and arrival, there is a health screening process, which includes taking your temperature and filling in a questionnaire. As mentioned before, we are developing an app in order to be able to track the traveler whilst they're in the country and in order to be able to keep the data up to date in terms of where they find themselves, should we ever need to track them and trace them. What's very important also is that we as a sector, as a tourism sector, are supportive of um, the new normal, as everybody's calling it, with our cancellation policies and our commercial terms. Ultimately, travelers are going to be hesitant to book a destination if they feel that they are at risk if they were to be prevented from being able to travel due to a COVID-related um, incident. And so there's a big ask from the Business Tourism Business Council to its members to, be, to drive demand, essentially, by um, applying four principles to their guidelines. Be as flexible as possible, be as reasonable as possible in terms of the, the penalty, if any. Be transparent about how you come to the decision of charging a penalty for a cancellation 
and communicate clearly on the policy. First prize essentially is that we're asking that most suppliers do not charge any cancellation penalty should the traveler be prevented from com coming to their um, hotel or their lodge due to COVID related uh, incident. So for example, they denied boarding because they tested positive at the airport or um, the wife tests positive prior to departure and they have to isolate them. I mean, there are all sorts of various permutations of what could possibly go wrong and clients, passengers won't be giving anyone their money if they believe that they're going to be losing that money if there's a last minute problem. So as I mentioned before, we're talking about countries where that we would want to consider opening up to. Um, obviously, there's three conditions for reopening inbound tourism is that the source countries um, open for outbound, are open for outbound tourism and they don't have travel restrictions for South Africa. So it's pointless we open our borders to Germany, but the German government doesn't allow its, its citizens to come to, to South Africa. Oh, um, similarly, we also need to make sure that the South African authorities are comfortable, that the nationals from that country, i.e. Germany in this case, don't pose unacceptable COVID risks to South Africans. We don't want to re-import the virus. And lastly, we have to make sure that there's sufficient demand for airlines to be able to operate. It's all good and well we open the borders. If the airlines aren't going to be making money on the route, then they will not be willing to fly. We are seeing around the world that travel is restarting. There's a lot of countries that have opened their borders. Kenya, Namibia, Tanzania, Seychelles, Zambia, Tunisia, all on the African continent and more to come. Many countries are listing destinations and source markets by categories of pandemic status and allowing their citizens to arrive or not arrive on that basis. Most of them are at the moment looking at a metric around new cases per million per day. Um, but um, we are also asking our government to be a little bit flexible around that because if you are too specific around the numbers, then you might have a situation like we've had in the UK now where overnight the UK government decided that if you had traveled to Spain, you needed to quarantine yourself for 14 days after you returned. And then of course, all travel stops, which we don't want to have happen. So we've, like I said, we've watched the Spanish, um, the Spanish um, trial with Germany, which has happened, which was very, very successful. And we would like to plan a similar trial with one country, direct flights only, and then followed by three to four other key countries. We've built a little package. I know I've, I'm running out of time. So we've built a, a package that we would suggest we offer to one or two German tour operators to sell to passengers, come into the country, experience the country, and tell the rest of the world how beautiful it is in South Africa. We have to work on making sure that we address a couple of our barriers. So we have to create an enabling environment, reduce the amount of visa requirements, create an e-visa process, maybe create a, um, a visa, the uni visa for the whole of Southern Africa, those sorts of things. Obviously now we have time to prepare for that as well, which would be fantastic to grow the industry, grow the business. So, and that is it. That is my little presentation about the hard work um, of trying to open up the borders of South Africa and trying to bring South, uh, tourists back into the country. Thank you very much.